It's that time again for another segment of Rule Review, where we will be discussing traveling. Don't walk away. Hello, and thanks for joining us yet again here at the Officials Institute. My name is Josh, and in this video, we are going to break down and explain a small and very specific part of the traveling rule, which ultimately sets the parameters of what many refer to as the ever popular jump stop move. But first, take a quick moment right now and click the thumbs up button and like this video. Also, click the subscribe button. And heck, since you're on a clicking frenzy, click and share this video with everyone you know, so we can all get better together. In today's game, the jump stop seems to be happening more and more frequently. So, as officials, we need to be ready and prepared to rule properly on these possible traveling plays. To do that, everything you need to know is in Article 2 of the traveling definition. All jump stop plays involve a dribbling or moving player that stops and then jumps while holding the ball. But it's not just one size fits all. Just because they all look similar, they could be very different. So knowing what to look for is the key to solving this intricate and difficult rule. So why don't we jump right in and start talking jump stop travels. Roll those clips. In our first clip, we see a player drive to the basket, take a big jump in the air, and return to the floor before shooting the ball. But no whistle is blown. Isn't this a traveling violation? Let's move in a little closer to find out what actually happened. When evaluating traveling plays that involve a dribbling or moving player, we must first identify two very important factors. One. When did the player catch the ball, essentially stopping from moving? And two, how many feet are touching the court? In this play, the dribbler picks up and catches the ball here. Now that we know this is the spot the player has stopped, we can move on to identifying which foot is the pivot foot. We see, after catching the ball, he is standing with one foot touching the playing court and the rules state that he is allowed to jump off that foot and return to the floor, but it must be with both feet landing simultaneously, which he successfully executes here. Let's review. Moving dribbling player, catches ball, one foot on the floor, jumps and lands simultaneously. This play was correctly ruled as a legal play by the officials. Watch it again. In this clip, we see a similar play with a dribbler once again jumping in the air and landing simultaneously to shoot the ball. Legal, right? Not exactly. Reviewing what we already know, when we watch this play again, we see a dribbling player catch the ball with one foot on the floor, jumping in the air, and landing on both feet simultaneously. So far, so good. Everything is legal and performed perfectly by the ball handler. However, the rules state that once both feet land simultaneously, neither foot can be a pivot. So once this player takes a step, he establishes a pivot foot, and therefore a traveling violation has occurred. So to recap, moving dribbling player, catches ball, one foot on the floor, jumps and lands simultaneously. Legal. Pivot. Violation. Here it is again. Our next clip shows a moving player once again 
attempt a jump stop, but stopped by a whistle for a traveling violation. Based on what we just learned, this must be a traveling violation because he pivoted after landing, right? However, when we move in closer and analyze what happened, we see the player, after taking his dribble, catches the ball while airborne. This is very important in determining how this player may land and what he is able to do afterward. Since neither foot is touching the floor when he caught the ball, when the player lands with both feet simultaneously, either foot may now become a pivot foot. The ability to pivot is a very distinct difference from the first two plays and can make it a little more difficult to know when a player can or cannot pivot after a simultaneous landing. It is also why knowing the status of the feet at the time the player catches the ball is so important. Reviewing the factors of this one again, moving player, catches ball, no feet touching the floor, feet land simultaneous, pivot. Legal. Watch it again. Moving on to our next clip, we see a player make a step back move to evade his defender. But wait, why are we watching a clip on the step back move? I thought this was a segment on the jump stop. Well, that is exactly what a step back is, a jump stop that moves backward. Let's zoom in and break it down. As the player takes a dribble and starts to move away from his defender, he catches the ball here with one foot on the floor and then proceeds to jump backward off that foot, landing on both feet simultaneously. Sound familiar? It should, because even though the player moved away from the basket, it is the exact same procedure as the jump stop move we discussed earlier, and because that rule does not make any distinction for the direction of the jump, was ruled correctly as a legal play by the officials. So to reiterate, moving player, Caught ball with one foot on the floor, jumps off that foot and lands simultaneously on both. Legal play. Here it is one more time. In our last clip, we watch another step back play. However, this time the officials call a traveling violation. But why? It looks like the last clip where we explained it was a legal backward jump stop move. When we examine this play closer, we'll see it's not the same. And though the difference may be slight, it is indeed different. It starts with the usual moving player catching the ball with one foot on the floor. But when he jumps off that foot, he clearly lands on one foot followed by the other foot. And because of that, the step back move is not legal. Remember, even though a moving dribbling player is allowed to jump off one foot, if they land, it must be with both feet landing simultaneously, and not as he did here with a one, two landing. The final review, dribbling player, catches ball, one foot on the floor, and jumps off that foot, but then lands with a one, to fashion. This play was properly ruled a traveling violation. Look at that one one more time. There it is, our complete analysis of the jump stop and step back move. I'm confident after watching these examples of this very specific traveling rule, in your next game, you will undoubtedly be better prepared to see and rule on these plays more properly. Before you go, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and help us get into the homes of more officials by sharing this video. Remember, the more people we can reach, the better the game will get. Until we see you next time, have a good game.